Hey Math 31, I had a question on section 3.3, number 33, so a lot of threes in this problem. But this question was asking, how do you find the average rate of change for this function on this interval? So how do I find the average rate of change of p of t when I'm on the interval negative 3, 1? And I've mentioned this, but it's really good to repeat. Whenever you hear the phrase average rate of change, they're asking you to find a slope. So ultimately we're going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but we just, we have different letters in this case. I'm not using y's and x's, I'm using a p and a t, so really I want p of t sub 1 minus p of t sub 2 over t sub 1 minus t sub 2. That's what we're looking at. So I want a slope, I want it in function notation, and then on top of it, I want it to have p's and t's instead of x's and y's. So here we go. When I look at this, I'm going to call this one, I'll call, I got negative 3, oops, you can't see it. Negative 3 is my, why is this not doing, oh, I have the eraser on. Ha! <laughs> negative 3 is my first t value. 1 is my second t value. So you see me doing this change in y, basically, right? We've got change in y values. And then on the denominator, denominator here, we have our change in our x values. All right, so I'm going to subtract these two y values in the numerator and subtract the two y values in the denominator. And I think you'll give me that 1 minus a negative 3 goes to 4. And what this shenanigans is here is me plugging 1 into this function and negative 3 into this function. So let me erase just that little bits right there, and we'll talk about how we plug 1 in and negative 3 in. So I have my function here, right? And I want to go ahead and plug 1 in for t. So let's see what that would look like. So if I wanted to do p of 1, right, it would be 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 1 over 1 squared plus 3. And that's essentially what I have written right here. All right, but that's me plugging in 1 wherever I see a t value, and then we're computing that number, right? So if I take a look, or if I take this further, 1 squared minus 4 is negative 3. 1 plus 1 is 2. On my denominator, I have 1 plus 3. So I'm really looking at negative 6 fourths, all right? And that's why you see that fraction landing there. So I did the same thing, but this time I plugged in negative 3, and I crunched that number. Right, so if I plug that into my function, I have negative 3 squared minus 4. I'm going to put that in a bracket. And then I have negative 3 plus 1. All right, and on the denominator, I have negative 3 squared plus 3. So when I simplify this a little bit, it looks like I have 9 minus 4 in here, which is 5. Negative 3 plus 1 is 2. Oops, excuse me. That is negative 2. I mean, not change that sign. The denominator looks like it's 9 plus 3, so that's 12. So it looks like I have a fraction of negative 10 twelfths. All right, now don't forget that we are going to subtract that. That's why when I subtract p of negative 3, I'm really subtracting a negative number, which is why you see this plus sign here. So now you see where the 10 twelfths is coming from. And from here on out, this is us manipulating fractions. And you can manipulate the fractions by hand. I never think that's a bad idea to practice. Or you could run them on your calculator. But once you crunch all of these numbers, your average rate of change is negative 1 sixth. All right, so there's number 33. Thanks so much, gang. Bye.